Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to my newest mod. This is Arkham Horror. Now, Arkham Horror, uh, this is second edition, and Arkham Horror is one of my favorite board games of all time. I've been meaning to make this mod pretty much since I got Tabletop Simulator. In fact, this was the, the game I got Tabletop Simulator to play. This is Mage Knight, basically. Let's get into this. Now, this is gonna be quite a long video. This is one of my more complicated mods. So I'm gonna do like a quick start guide at the beginning and just give you the basic information on how to play. And then at the end, we'll have the more advanced stuff, which I do suggest you watch if you wanna get the most out of what I'm trying to do with this mod. So this is what you'll be seeing when you load up the game. And what you wanna do is just come over here and I've placed two bags up here place the core set and Tragic's base setup. Now, uh, this mod currently only has the Arkham Horror base set installed, plus some additional modules, but eventually it'll have more stuff. So I'm just gonna hit base set, boom, and this is gonna place just the base components onto the build pool, which I'll talk about later in the video. And then once you've got that done, just hit build pool and it creates the pool that you're going to be using for your game. Now, by default, it's just going to dump out eight uh, books. If you don't want to play with eight, just delete them. So let's uh, delete that. We'll just play with uh, four players for this demo. Now, once you have this set out, if you look down here at this sort of area of tokens and stuff, there'll be a bag called Great Old Ones. And when you built the pool, it added all the Great Old Ones that you selected into this bag. So before you run setup, like if I hit setup, it's going to error. You have to drag at least, you have to drag, you have to drag one great old one onto the table. It doesn't matter where you put it, it just needs to go onto the table. So if you want a specific great old one, like say I don't want to have Yogi, you can just uh, search the bag and grab out which one you want. Let's grab Night of the Tep. Okay. And so that's how you choose what you're going to play with. Otherwise, just randomly draw from the bag. The bag will automatically shuffle at the beginning. And every time you drop something in there, it's going to shuffle. So uh, just dragging stuff out will give you a random. Once you've done that, you'll need to have books on the table. Okay. So by default, it came, comes with some books. But you can drag out more player boards from these two bags. Uh, these little journals here, okay? So one of them drags this one and one of them drags this one. You can see the difference because the card search is on opposite sides. This is just so when you're setting up your your game, you can customize it to look how you want. Then also, at the same time it did, you built the pool, you'd have this little bag I've called the Investigator Headquarters. These are where all your Investigator sheets are gonna be kept, okay? Now, if I just hit set up now, like after I've dragged, dragged the thing onto the, onto the board, it will randomly choose from that bag uh, gators to put on this box. So if you wanna just play random gators, that is how you do it. If you wanna play specific gators, all you need to do is search and drag out who you want. So say I want uh, the doc and I want the psychiatrist and uh, I want the other two to be random. That's what I'd do, okay? Then all you need to do is hit the setup button. You blammo, you blammo, you blammo, and everything gets set up, okay? Now we're ready to play. Just wait for the finished setup uh, to appear in the chat window, and then you're basically ready to go. So let's have a quick look at the main board. Okay, the way the main board works, it's just like a normal board, except if you hold down Alt over the locations, it'll pop up those locations so you can better read them. And that's pretty much all that does. Let's have a look at the player board. The player board is pretty self-explanatory. You have a number of tokens in the corner. So you've got sanity tokens, you've got stamina tokens, you've got money, and you've got clues, and uh, you've got a little trash bin down here, so you can just chuck things in there to delete. 
But let's talk about some of the more fancy stuff. The start is there's snap points on all the all these values, so it's easy to move these things. But uh, let's have a look at the sanity first. Okay, so sanity stamina, it comes in and it will set the sanity stamina to whatever your sheet is. So here is seven three. Okay. If you left click on a value, it goes up. If you right click on a value, it goes down. Okay. If it goes down to zero, it'll flash red and say whatever. And you'll see this other value here that says seven. This is your max. So you can adjust this as well by left clicking to go up and right clicking to go down. Okay. So say he got plus, uh, plus one sanity. You can now go up to eight without going over. Currently, these are maxing out at nine. I may need to allow them to go higher, but at the moment, they, you can't go higher than nine. Okay, so that's how the sanity and stamina works, left and right click. Now, over here, we have our major buttons for drawing cards, and they work pretty simply. They work a lot like all the buttons in many of my mods. They count the amount of times you, you press them. So if I want to draw three commons, I just press it three times in quick succession. One, two, three. Outcome, three cards. Okay. And like all my mods, I use my trash bags that I made. So just chuck anything you want into the trash bag and it will actually send all the cards to the correct discard piles, which I'll talk about in a sec. In addition, you can type into the card search. So if you click on the card search and type, so let's say uh, bike and hit the search. Oh, I can't find anything called bike. Let's try uh, 45. Bam, out will come the 45 automatic. So what I'm trying to say here is that you, got, you just type something in and then press enter. Okay, now it doesn't search for types, it shirts, searches the names, and it's a, it's a, uh, the search is partial, it's a partial search, right? So say, shotgun, oh, let's, let's find one. Oh, it's motorcycle, that's why I couldn't, didn't find it. So if I typed in cycle, C-Y-C-L-E, press enter, and now I do a search, out will come the motorcycle. You don't have to use the full names is what I'm getting at. So that's left click. So click it multiple times to draw multiple cards or type into the card search, press enter and then search with the left click. In addition, there's a number of ways in Arkham Horror to draw from the discard pile. Now, the discard pile in Arkham Horror is actually placed at the bottom of the deck. You're not supposed to use technically use discard piles. I just prefer to, and this is my mod, so I'm doing it the way I like to play. But technically, that is what a discard pile is supposed to be underneath here. It's functionally identical. It's really just a, a design system to reduce the footprint of the game on your table. So the bottom of the discard pile is the top of the discard pile. I mean, the bottom of the deck, when you're drawing from the bottom of the deck is the top of the discard pile, okay? So if you just right click on any of these buttons, it's gonna draw from the bottom in the same way. See how I drew the rifle? The next one is ax. So if I right click, it'll draw the ax. And I can draw multiple, one, two, three. We'll draw, you know, multiples. And uh, if there is no discard pile it will of course draw from the the bottom of that deck okay and that's pretty much that and you'll also note that whatever's if you drop a deck in whatever's the last thing you drop in here will be the top of that discard pile so that is the way these work, and it works for all of these buttons, okay? So common, unique, spells, allies, and skills. This last button is slightly different. This is for special cards. Now, special cards are things like blessings, bank loans, retainers, the deputy stuff, and so forth and so on. Uh, injury madness. Uh, these ones here aren't actually part of the the draw buttons, you have to do them manually. So say I wanted an injury, I just type in injury 
and just click on the gray button and out will come an injury. If I want to get a blessing, I just click bless and out will come a blessing. I want to get a lodge membership, out it comes. I want to get a curse, etc., etc., etc. And this just means I don't have to build a thousand buttons. Most of the cards are going to be fetched with these buttons, okay? And that's pretty much that. And of course, these all discard correctly through the, the bin. Let me just get rid of this chat window just to give you a bit more room. In addition, uh, you've also got this draw location button here. So, or just before I talk about that, may as well do it now. If you look at your player board, it's sort of hidden because I didn't want it to be visible. But if you sort of move your mouse towards where the the paper clip is, you click that, it'll take you to your token. And if you click the token at the sort of bottom corner of it, it'll uh, take you to take you back to the thing. So, you know, you get used to that pretty quickly. But my point is he is at the, the administration building. OK, and you can see that the administration building is written on his sheet here. But if I move him somewhere else, let's say move him to the Mr. Matonic Lodge, you can see that this actually changes as well. And if I zoom out, if you keep you, your eye on that, you can see that this will change basically wherever you move him. Even if you move into other worlds, it's going to change. Okay. So once you've done that, all you need to do is press it and it will draw the location card for where you are and it's written here so you know it's the police station and you do your thing, okay? Just like my other buttons, if you press it multiple times, you'll draw multiple cards. The right click button doesn't work in locations, but if you go to an other world, it does. So when you're in an other world, the way other world works is that you draw from the other world deck until you get a matching color to these colors. So this does this for you. So if I click it once, it's going to draw until I get a green. That's the first card. Okay. So it drew two cards that time. Draw one card, draw one card, do two cards and so forth. So sometimes you'll get a big hit or draw like a whole heap of cards. There you go, drew four cards that time, whatever. Sometimes though, when you are through items, and I think I think it's the jazz musician, his special ability is that he draws ignoring color matches. Well, you can do that just by right clicking and that'll draw one card regardless. Okay, see so that drew a yellow card. So that's how the, the other world button works. And that's pretty much it for the player board, except for the die roller, which is this thing here. So the die roller is fairly simple as well. You've got the roll button, you just click it and it rolls. Okay. Simple as pie. Oh, and it does a nice display when you get your correct, you know, get your elder signs. The button on the uh, right will put it up and the bottom on the left will reduce it. Okay, so say I want to roll 12 die, bam. Now you'll note that it rolls three times during the testing. I've had a few people ask about this. The reason it rolls three times is because I like it that way, basically. Uh, rolling in a computer can be a little bit sterile, I think, because it's basically just a number generator. Right, so I'm back. I got uh, had to leave the room for a second. Where was I? So whatever. So you roll. The reason why it rolls three times is because I like the way it stops and then it changes. So you miss all your rolls and you go, oh no, and then oh wait, I'm rolling again. Or you've got your roll and then it changes. It adds a, some excitement to the rolls for me, and I really like that. So that's why the die roller rolls three times. And odds wise, because it's constant it doesn't change the odds also if you right click on the button it'll change it to your blessed die or your cursed die so let's roll 12 cursed and it works like that okay you blam 
And if you right click on the left one, it'll set it to one. If you right click on the right one, it'll increase it by 10. And that's how the die roller functions. Now, if you don't like the die roller, there is an Arkham box up here that you can, I'm going to be putting various things in. And one of the things I put in here is a tool to get rid of the die rollers if you don't like them. Basically, you can right click on the tool to remove all the die rollers on the table, or you can just uh, uh, drop it onto a table. So say Vincent here doesn't want like the die roller, you can just drop it onto his thing and it will clear the die roller from his board. So that's a little tool if you want to use it. And I've also included in here an alternative die roller for people that do want to use, want to use this instead. This is just a little tool. You can just stick it on your guy and I can just click it. Uh, this is a, sorry, this is a, a bag. You can just pull out a die and you've got your die roller. So if I want to roll them, one, two, three, and I'll just roll some dice that way. And of course you can use any die roller you want. This one won't do the display. And if you right click it, you can set the state to however you want it. Okay. But you should really use my awesome die roller because I spent a lot of time making it. <laughs> Okay, and that is pretty much it. Uh, you've got your gates over here. You just They're all manual. Your monsters are over here. They're all manual. You'll note that there's 60 monsters in there because it did uh, add the master monsters from Nyothotep. Uh, but let's just quickly talk about how to kill gators. There's a little tombstone here. I can just pick him up and drop him on any investigator and it'll devour him and replace her or replace him with her in this case. In addition, if you right click the tomb and you just type in a name, so I'm going to put in Mandy as a search into the description field, it'll actually fetch that particular gator. And dead gators are placed in the investigator graveyard here. You can always drag them back in if you want to put them back in circulation. Now let's have a quick look at the Mythos cards. When you press the Mythos card button, out will come the Mythos. You can see the rumor has gone into the rumor slot and uh, yeah, an environment into the environment slot and a headline into the headline slot. There you go. Nice. That worked out very well. Now, when you're looking at these cards, you can drag clues out of the little symbol here if you need. And that's basically all that happens here. Uh, you can clear these manually by pressing, right clicking any of these buttons or pressing these buttons. Like so say I want to, say I cleared this rumor, I could just right cl uh, click on clear rumor and it'll go away. Uh, if I can just get another rumor to come in, here you go. But now that I've got a rumor in, I just grab that old rumor, uh, headline, 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 rumor here. Uh, the next, if there's already a rumor, of course, it doesn't replace the uh, one that's existing and it will go into the headline area just so you can activate just the, you know, the, the, the bottom of the card. You don't do the text with rumors. Rumors can only be removed when they resolve. You also have your activity markers. Uh, these can be placed out anywhere you like and these will uh, delete when the card is removed. So if I put a bunch of activity markers out, if I clear that rumor, it removes that and all the markers, same with the environment card. So that is that. You've got your doom tokens here and that's pretty much all you need to do to play the game. Very, very simple. Uh, with your setup, you will have to just set your own start tracks because uh, I couldn't be bothered programming it. This is a four player game. So it would be seven gates. It would be four outskirts and it would be seven monster limit. 
Okay. Oh, one more thing. You've got your little monster cup dispenser here. This is for people, some people, they like to play very specific setups with all these different monsters, you know, and draw, they roll dice and draw from different monster cups. <clears throat> They're all here if you want to sort them out yourself. Okay. So that is the basic operations on how to use this mod, how to, how to quickly set up the board and also how to use the board. Okay. Very, very simple, really. All you need to do is you click this button to roll your dice, you click these buttons or right click these buttons to draw and that is pretty much it. Let's uh, just quickly load up one more time. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you a couple of more advanced things just with how the pool builder works. Now I've already discussed basically how this works. Uh, whatever you place on here, whatever components you place onto this little tray, you hit build pool and it will be added to the table for setup. Now, because there's so many, there's just so many things that are going to be added to this mod. I'm going to put in, there's like 10 base expansions just from the official ones. Then there's like about another five huge variant expansions made by, you know, the community that are just as good at some of them, maybe even considered better than the official ones. Plus there's just small modular expansions, you know, just more cards, more goos, more whatever. So I want to support all that. So instead of having to recode everything all the time, I've created this pool builder, which theoretically should just allow you to just drop bags onto here and it will create the pool for you. So for example, when the mod is a bit larger, it'll have a list, all the different expansion boards will be along the top, but you want to play uh, you know, Arkham Horror, because that's all there is. We just drop the player mat, and then we come over to here, and we can see all the current components that are in the mod. So over here, for example, we have the great old ones. We've got a bag that is all of them in the mod. Then we've got just the AH ones, just the Idmouse Horror, just the Kingsport, just the Dunwich, and also the Arkham Knights ones. So say I want to play Arkham Knights ones, I'll just grab the Arkham Knights bag and I've put that on the here. And now when the pool is built, it's going to be using just those components. And so here's all the AH monsters, the mass monsters. Over here, we've got the investigators. Uh, this one here is all investigators. But say I just want to play with the Dunwich Horror investigators, I'll just pull them out or I could make a mix and match because these are bags. I could go, you know what? I don't like Rita at all. I just don't want her to, oop, <laughs> I just don't want her to even be available. So I'm just going to take it out of the bag and delete it, you know, and that way it's not going to be in the, in the, in the setup. And that is so, you know, you can make your own setups however you want. Like there's things like, for example, uh, the thematic scenario list, which is this guy's made all these thematic, like more RPG like ways to play this game. And for that, you need to have certain investigators, certain monster types, certain, uh, even certain mythos cards. So you can build all that by just modifying these bags that you place on the pool. Over here, we have the AH gates and up here, we've got the lurker of the threshold gates, which are the alternative gates. You know, so say I want to play with the AH gates, uh, the lurker gates, I just chuck the lurker gate there. But you know what? Maybe I want to play with both the lurker and the thing because I feel like it. I can do that as well. Not a problem. Over here, I've already added to the game as well as the lurker gates, all the cards for all the small decks. So you've got all the common spells, uniques, uh, allies, skills, okay? So this bag here is just everything. So that's all official small decks, okay? The ones at the top are all the decks for just those individual types, okay? So nice. And then if you look into the, these are bags themselves. So if I drag out this one, this is all the spell decks separated by expansion. So I can, you know, just add exactly what I want. Okay, so I just want the Kingsport spells. Boom, there's the Kingsport spells. Now, a good way to do this, uh, a good way to do this is like uh, one of the things that you'll note 
particularly is the ally deck. You can only ever have 11 allies, even if you've got like 30 ally cards. But you can only really gain allies, I mean, besides Mars Boarding House or whatever, by passing location tests. So if you get an ally from Kingsport and you don't have the Kingsport locations, you're never going to be able to get that ally. So uh, a good way to do, and the way I do when I do my setups for, at home, is I use all these cards, but I'll only use the ally deck for, you know, what I'm playing. So if I'm playing, uh, you know, Dunwich, I would use just the Dunwich uh, allies, like so. Now, the uh, these are infinite bags, so you don't have to worry about ever screwing them up. You can delete whatever you want. The game starts with the Arkham Horror components on the table, as well as the uh, injury madness, the relationships, and the personal stories. Okay, so you don't need to ever add them. Also up here, just at the beginning of the mod, lots more stuff is going to be added. I've got the location cards for Dunwich Horror, because a lot of people add these. The, well, these are the location cards just for the Arkham Horror board that come with Dunwich. Now, the reason, you know, like downtown and everything. These add seven more cards. They basically double... They basically double these decks here. And uh, a lot of people play with them mixed in permanently. So that option is there. Okay. And then up here, I've added a couple of the Mismotonic Horror augments that you can use. Mismotonic Horror was an interesting expansion where it actually just expanded all the other expansions. So you've got extra Mythos cards, you've got extra injury cards, extra madness cards, and extra relationship cards. Okay. Once you have everything on the board that you want to use, you just hit the build pull button and it will send everything down to here and set it all up for you and you're ready to start playing as I discussed at the beginning of the game. Remember to actually get the setup button to work. You need to have at least one goo pulled out of the bag and you need at least one investigator, uh, not investigator, one investigator sheet. Okay. So remember, because I only added the uh, Arkham Horror, uh, the Arkham Knights uh, monsters, I've got them there. Let's play my favorite Arkham Knights monster, which is Yig. The Arkham Heights version of the Yig is awesome. And you blammo. You're ready to play. Now, that can be a bit tedious over time. So, what you can do is you can save your setups the way you want them. Okay? So, this bag here is called Tragic's base setup. This is what I usually play when I play the base Arkham Horror. Okay, so if I go place on the table, you can see that it's got quite a lot of stuff I've added to it. I use all the investigators. I just use Arkham Gates. I use the Arkham Monsters, all the great old ones. I use Madness and Injuries from Miss Metonic. I use my relationships, I use co all the commons, all the spells, all the skills. I just use the Dunwich allies and I use the Dunwich locations. So this is a build that I've made and I've saved into this bag. And this mod will allow you to build those bags yourselves without doing any scripting or programming. So the way to build your own setup is to do this. First, you go to the board grab whatever board you want to use and just hit build pull and that'll move those boards down to the table. Now these are completely movable. You can place these anywhere you like, just don't rotate them. So when you end up with like, you know, Arkham and you have Arkham and Dunwich, you have like three or four different expansion boards, you might want to place these anywhere you want and you can do that. So I'm gonna, for my setup, I want to have the Arkham board over here and 
Once you do that, you then pull out your player boards and place them wherever you want them. So I'm going to do it like this. This is how I want to have my setup. Okay. This might be a good setup to play the uh, global investigator variant, which is a variant where you have uh, you don't trade. It's like a, you just have a global pool of uh, items. Whatever. The point is you can do whatever you want. That's the idea of this mod is so you can do it the way you want to do it. But anyway, so once you've got this basically set up the way you like it, uh, then pull out a pack up bag, name it to what you want it to call it. I'm going to call it demo bag, a demo setup. How about that? Demo setup. And then you build your pool exactly how you want it. So we want, you know, the Arkham Horror board. Uh, let's have just the great old ones from Arkham Knights. We'll just build basically what we did last time. This time we'll use all the cards from everything. We're only going to use the Kingsport Investigators. Let's use just the Lurker, the Gates. Gates. Oh, and of course we'll need monsters. So let's get the AH monsters and the AH mass monsters. But you know what? I hate, uh, I hate the Shoggoths. Let's just get rid of the Shoggoths. We don't want them. Yuck. And you know what? Uh, I think also, yeah, well, let's, let's also put in the, the Dunwich Horror locations. And I'll tell you what, let's, because we're putting in the Dunwich Horror locations, Let's put in the Dunwich Horror uh, allies. Okay, so now that I've built my pool and I can go in, do anything I want, add anything I like, do it any way I like, uh, you know, change things, pull things out of bags. But once I've got this set up, what I do now is I just hit this button that says pack up, yoink, and it pulls it into this little bag, right? And that includes the, the the player boards and the game board down here. And now all I need to do is hit place bag and then hit build pool and I'm ready to go. And it's all set up exactly how you'd want it. Nice. And that's pretty much everything you need to know on how to build your pool. But the question now is, how would you actually use them? So if I go back here, oop, it actually deletes all that stuff, doesn't it? So uh, that was a bit of a mistake. I should have saved it. I should have shown you the saving before I did that. But uh, let's just let's just do let's just place uh, my my content, and we'll pull out a new bag, and I'll just go more demo. Oop. and hit pack up. Okay, so this is my bag, all right? I've got a bag that I set up that I've made called More Demo. Could be like scenario one from the Arkham League, whatever you're doing. If you go to objects in the menu of Tabletop Simulator, there's a little thing called saved objects. And this is like, a, you can build your own little library of saved objects here and you can make your own directory. So I've made a directory called a8save and in there are various items. Now that I've got my pack up bag or set up, I can just right click on that and go save object, select the directory, and I'll just call it more demo, hit save, and now it is saved for future use. So anytime I load up the mod, say I load up the mod, I can just load it up like so. I can just come down here, go into my save directory, pull out the more demo bag that we just saved, hit it, and then hit build, and I'm ready to go. And that is a way that you can save your own setups for the game. You can save your own, uh, your own, uh, you know, builds basically without any kind of programming or scripting or anything. You can do it all with these little bags and you can save them into your thing and you know you can even upload these bags these setup bags 
to the workshop to share your builds with other people if you want. And that is, and once we have a lot of content in here, once we've got all the, you know, all the expansions and then all the big box expansions, you know, there'll be so much content and you'll be able to build such a variety of games just through this little builder without me having to actually program all the options. That is the goal. And that is pretty much uh, the, the game, isn't it? So that, that's it. There's not, not really anything else to say. You just, uh, you know, and if you, if you don't want to do all that, I am going to have the, add my own bags here. So if you just want to play the core set, just come and click place the core set. Hit the build. <clears throat> you know, I don't want to play eight players. I want to play four players. So I'll just delete those ones. Drag out a random goo and set up and we're ready to rumble. Okay, well, that is the mod. Uh, there's a lot more work to do on it, obviously, because I'm going to be adding features and also adding content. But I usually take quite a long break after I upload my core set mod because there's quite a lot of work. Now that the framework it's e is done, it's easy to add stuff, but it's going to be a break. I'm going to just take a break from modding for a second, work on some of my other hobbies. I have a huge backlog of miniatures to paint, basically. <laughs> you know, I actually forgot two more little things, just slight things. Basically, I've given you a slight little tool to help you make your board setups a little easier. So say I want to play a six-player game, I might do this. Uh, it can be pretty ugly, you know, having all these things all looking all weird. So what I've done, there's this little align tool uh, this will get deleted on setup. All you need to do is it will just align books to each other based on the direction. So if I drop it like that and I hit the blue button, they'll all align together. If I, so I'll align them. And you know what? This align this way and this way and this way. And that's just an easy way to align the books up, get it a little bit neater. Very, very simple. And uh, also, like my uh, mod for, you know, what's it called, Lord of the Rings, I have actually added hotkeys into this mod as well. So the way hotkeys in Tabletop Simulator work is if you go to Menu and you go to Configuration, you go to Controls, all the way down here you'll have your hotkeys. You've got Keypad, Num, key, Keypad is your numpad, 1, 2, 0, and they are assigned to the scripting. Now, when you're, when you're changing these, it's a good idea to change it in the secondary column, just to, I'm pretty sure it'll work, but you can change these to anything you want. The downside is that these keyboard shortcuts are global. So if you change the settings here, they change in every one of your mods. But my mods always use the numpads, which are the default settings. But of course, you know, you can change them. So instead of pressing, you know, numpad three to spawn a clue, you could spend, you could make it press C to spawn a clue, whatever you want to do. Uh, okay, so basically these, these the, the hotkeys will be listed in the mod page, but you can press, you've got to have num lock on, you can press four to spawn clues, you can press it multiple times, of course, uh, five will spawn sanity, six will spawn uh, money and if you hold down the zero button it's kind of like holding down shift or control it's a modifier so if you hold zero and five it's stamina uh, uh, sanity and five is just stamina uh, you can spawn gate markers with the uh, eight button and you can spawn doom tokens with the nine button and you can also send things to the trash can really easily if you press the one it will just send it to the crash trash bin for you and sometimes you'll it'll you know the the rules will ask you to send things to the game box so i've actually built a game box uh, and if you do the three button it'll actually send those items to the game box so they're out of circulation, but you can still, you know, access them if you need them for any reason. 
So three is to the game box. In addition, if you hold down the modifier, so it's 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3, will spawn the activity tokens. I've also added uh, some dice spawns as well. So you can go 0, 7, 0, 8, and 0, 9, just to spawn some custom dice if you wish to use them. And uh, yeah, and that is, that's, I just, I just forgot about those little tiny features. But that is the Arkham Horror mod. I hope you like it and congratulations if you got through this entire instruction video. You know, if you did, why don't you leave a comment in the YouTube comments giving me a number. How about type in five just to tell me that you saw to the end. <laughs> Either way, I'll see you guys next time.